let us begin this uh, session with the wonderful saying of Paracelsus, who is the father of toxicology. All substances are poison. There is none that is not a poison. Mean that the right dose differentiate a poison from a remedy. Let us move on to the general principle involved in management of poisoning. Before that, let us say about the reasons for poisoning. The poisoning may happen because of some accidental incidences, especially the victims are young children because they are very much curious and even uh, they ingest uh, many type of substances even though it is having uh, noxious states and uh, odor just for the curiosity so they may be consuming it so thereby toxicity can be absorbed accidentally in children and the other reason it may be the suicidal attempts where poisoning can be absorbed especially with older children adolescents and adults so many a times multiple drugs are involved in uh, suicidal activities which includes alcohol, amphetamine and many of the OTC drugs may be used. So, especially in elders, this uh, accidental poisoning uh, incidences are very high because of uh, age induced cognitive impairment may be the reason. So, they may come across with uh, various physiological changes in the body contributing uh, confusions, poor eyesight, mental impairment or multiple prescription which is one of the major reasons for uh, this type of poisoning. Many times this older population they may be suffering with many comorbid condition so that they may be visiting many physician so different uh, prescriptions might be absorbed polypharmacy these are the major reason for poisoning in the elderly patients and some other uh, reason like uh, occasionally in order to harm someone so some uh, type of poisoning might be absorbed the people they poison someone whose intent to kill or disable the person why they want to kill or disable them just to get uh, robbed for, uh, with them for some property or to rape many of the cns uh, depressant agents are used which can cause this disability by causing general central nervous system depressant even some of the drugs they can cause amnesic activity also which includes scopolamine benzodiazepines, gamma hydroxy, butyrate. So they have sedative or amnesic property or sometimes uh, one drug may be having both the property. So let us see about the root of entry of uh, poison. By taking an example of organophosphorus poisoning, uh, we can uh, see like uh, various root of uh, exposures of uh, poison can be noticed here by injection it may be by inhalation or exposure of the body surfaces with this substances may act as a root of entry of poison. So here we can observe many of the ways how this organophosphorus substances may enter into the body. So these are used as an insecticide to kill the insects especially in the form of sprays it will be used. So one spraying like air may be get contaminated with the organophosphorus substances. So many of times like whatever the crops you are getting produced by using uh, these sprays, so they may be get contaminated, they may act as a source, so that will be consumed as a dietary product by the person. So not only with the uh, human being, so sometimes indirectly the poison may be get admin administered to the body, so in the form of some direct dairy products. Even sometimes uh, the cattle may uh, fed with the grass which might be grown in a soil which got contaminated with the organic phosphate substances so thereby it may enter into the human being. 
Even many times like underground water may be get contaminated with these chemical substances such as the portable water may be impure. So if the person consume it, like he may get entry with the substances. Then other like uh, aquatic system might got uh, disturbed by this uh, chemical substances. If the person consume such agents, so thereby even it can cause cause any effect. Ultimately, so toxicity would be absorbed by different route of entry. In such condition, how to manage the situation? So after exposure or ingestion and absorption of most of the poisons, so they will undergo metabolism and they are going to pass through the gastrointestinal tract. At the end, so they may be get excreted. So during the period, tea half concentration, they are going to show some deleterious effect on the tissue system. Occasionally, some of the substances like tablets, like aspirin or iron or enteric coated uh, drugs, so they will be uh, present in the larger concentration in the GI tract. They by continuously on exposure of such agents, so they may be get, keep on absorbing in the gastrointestinal tract, thereby it may cause some toxicity. So in such condition, we can apply this general principle involved in the management of poisoning. Right at the beginning general discussion, I was quoted that for all the type of poisoning cases, we may not be having the antidote and the other uh, way like uh, many times the nature of the poison may not be known even though if you have antidote. In such condition, usually we will be following general principle for the management of poisoning condition. So this general principle can be seen in six ways. Six principles can be absorbed. First is the stabilization, second is the evaluation, third is decontamination, fourth is poison elimination, uh, fifth one antidote administration and sixth is nursing and psychiatric care. For any type of poisoning, even though if you have antidote, so you should always apply this principle in the management of poisoning. As a general in this unit, we will be giving more focus on this individual principle involved in the management of poisoning such that it, this information can be applied in any type of poisoning in the practice. Let us start with the stabilization. Let us see what are the aspects and what, what the principle says about the stabilization. So initial survey should be done in order to direct and assess and correct a life threatening problem if anything is present in a person. Especially uh, whenever poisoning happened, it is essential for us to identify and correct life threatening problem which is present in the person. So what is the meaning of this uh, assessment and correction of life threatening agent? So assessment I will be talking in the next slide. Let us see about the life threatening problems. So whenever a poison got entered into the body, so they are going to target respiratory system whereby breathing complication can be observed followed by other system like cardiovascular system and central nervous system where a depression might be observed. So initially we should follow this ABCD technique in order to stabilize the person, in order to keep this vital organ in a clear condition. As we have seen the life threatening problems, let us see how the assessment and corrections will be performed. So now this can be categorized into assessment and management. What the correction word what we use it so that can be seen in the management. Let us see what are the initial assessment should be done in order to stabilize the condition. The first assessment should be performed with airway and breathing and circulation should be checked. Assessment of depression of central nervous system should be done. Now how the management or correction can be done? Suppose airway and breathing complication 
respiratory insufficiency should be addressed by uh, using some techniques so then circulatory failure means so it should be get treated or cardiac arrhythmias it should be separately treated by giving pharmacological agents then coming with the depression of uh, dip, uh, central nervous system management should be done by using various agents this is about the management so in detail like how each aspects will be carried out will be studying under coming slide let us see about the stabilization so the first thing what we are told was about the airway and breathing complications first assessment should be done related to the airway and breathing first it should be get identified this identification always it will be done by using the symptoms the symptoms of airway obstruction should be identified which include dyspnea means difficulty in breathing air hunger can be observed like deep and rapid shallow breathing can be observed then hoarseness a strained voice can be observed during the breathing this how it will be get assessed so then coming with the signs because of these three complication what are the signs can be observed like shrider vibrating noise can be seen intercostal and substernal retractions can be noticed in this photo you can observe the retraction of substernal and intercostal muscle then cyanosis can be observed in such condition this uh, earlier three symptoms may cause this signs cyanosis as you know about the bluish color might be observed because of lack of oxygen which is followed by sweating and tachypnea can be observed in such condition so now uh, how the correction can be done so as uh, air hunger and other situation where oxygen supply was absorbed very less so immediately normal oxygen supply should be carried out physiologically if you observe normal oxygen delivery certain requirements are seen in the physiology if the requirements are healthier so then only normal oxygen supply can be absorbed suppose if you administer oxygen if physiology is not supporting so then oxygen partial pressure cannot be achieved so let us see what are the normal oxygen delivery requirements the first requirement adequate hemoglobin oxygen saturation should happen suppose hemoglobin oxygen saturation is not absorbed so then oxygen partial pressure cannot be achieved of so then we should have adequate hemoglobin level like anemia or decrease in the oxygen uh, hemoglobin level so may decrease the oxygen supply so then the next thing like normal oxygen unloading mechanism we should have as you know like the role of hemoglobin act to act as a transporter this oxygen should get unloaded from the blood so in order to get utilized by the cell suppose the mechanism fails there so then oxygen supply cannot be absorbed to achieve all these things proper and adequate cardiac output is required failure in uh, or decrease in cardiac output may decrease the oxygen supply then how to identify the situation whether the person is having complication with the respiratory system or not increased metabolic acidosis can be observed as a marker in such condition so this uh, metabolic acidosis can be observed in presence of partial oxygen suppose the partial oxygen concentration is normal then even if a person is suffering with some metabolic acidosis strongly it suggest that he got administered with some toxins or he may be suffering with some condition where decrease oxygen carrying capacity might be absorbed say for example it may be carbon monoxide or methemoglobinemia or reduced tissue oxygen especially in cyanide as well as hydrogen sulfide poisoning condition this can be absorbed of 